Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Space exploration has inspired the development of new technologies that result in innovative devices and crafts capable of exceeding Earth's orbit. One of the greatest objectives in this industry is the creation of reusable vehicles capable of going into space and returning several times, which means that space missions are economically viable and encourage more trips. This has led to the development of spacecraft, such as the Boeing X-37, since the early 2000s to do space experimentation, technology testing, and research in orbit for extended periods. The vehicle is the first since the space shuttle with the ability to return experiments to Earth for further inspection and analysis. To take the X-37 to orbit, powerful rockets like SpaceX Falcon 9 or the Atlas V from United Launch Alliance are required. Both of them have served as the launching vehicles of the X-37 during their testing and later orbital missions. Usually, in both cases, the spacecraft goes inside the rocket's payload fairing. This is an aluminum shell with outer thermal protection that goes on the tip of the rocket. Once the cargo is secured, the rocket is transported to the launch pad using a crawler transporter, a heavy-duty tracked vehicle that can carry enormous loads. Here, the launching control systems are connected to the combustion systems the engineers operate during the ignition. With several tests and launches carried out over the years, it has allowed engineers to understand and improve the ship's systems. This has resulted in longer operations and more ambitious objectives. After seven missions carried out since 2010, the X-37 has completed a total of 4,010 days in orbit, usually testing experimental payloads, spacecraft endurance, or small satellite deployment. However, reaching orbit is only part of the mission, since re-entry into the atmosphere and landing is equally or even more important due to the great risk that this maneuver entails. This is why its design is based on space shuttles using a thermal protection system incorporating silica ceramic tiles. The X-37 has shown its potential by contributing to the development of different experiments carried out in orbit. With each spacecraft launching, there is the opportunity to test and analyze new concepts and technologies, such as the photovoltaic radio frequency antenna module. This experiment looks to harness solar energy in space and convert it into usable power that can be transmitted back to Earth. Testing will lead to the creation of a continuous and reliable energy source unaffected by atmospheric conditions. Collaboration across several sectors will be key to overcoming the challenges that this and other experiments face. Succeeding in such experiments, especially those on space solar energy, will bring benefits to various sectors, from military and strategic applications to civil energy infrastructure.
Other promising experiments have involved the study of long-term space exposure on seeds for space crop production during interplanetary missions and permanently inhabited bases in space. These are the types of experiments that lead to new advances in the space industry and possible space colonization. Being a reusable vehicle, the X-37 offers the advantage of creating a continuous mission schedule with only certain intermittent moments of maintenance and repair in the hangar once it lands. Among the most common but necessary space missions is the deployment of satellites in orbit for different objectives and industries. One of these is for navigation systems, being GPS, the most recognized. The development of this technology has been critical for the U.S. military providing accurate navigation information, in addition to supporting everyday users with location services. Considering how important and delicate the elements that comprise these satellites are, the logistics behind their transportation to the launch site require strict planning. Every step requires the same level of responsibility and attention, The transportation of the GPS-3 satellite involves coordination between several key stakeholders, including Lockheed Martin, the U.S. Air Force, and the place where the satellite will be processed and integrated before launch. Such coordination also results in creating a detailed schedule of every step of the process, taking from two to four months to make. After this planning, the satellite is carefully lifted onto a specialized transport vehicle and weighed while still in its containment unit to ensure it is in with specifications. It is typically transported using a C-17 Globemaster III, which is capable of handling the dimensions of the satellite. Since the C-17 has a roller loading floor and a large aft ramp, the container can be loaded easily. Finally, the plane arrives at the Space Coast Regional Airport near Cape Canaveral in Florida, where the satellite will be prepared before being integrated into the launch vehicle. This preparation is carried out by Astrotech, a payload processing facility that supports launches from Cape Canaveral and the Vandenberg Space Force Base. SpaceX Falcon 9 has been used to launch the latest versions of the GPS-3. Finally, the launch team follows the final countdown ensuring all systems are functional before the rocket is launched into space. Such samples of technology within the aerospace industry demonstrate the versatility and innovation that result in the development of devices and aircraft. Some of these developments demonstrate great potential, allowing them to remain operational for several years, even decades. This is the case of Lockheed's U-2 high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft, which was developed in the 50s. Later, an improved model was acquired by NASA in the 80s, named the ER-2 high-altitude airborne science aircraft. Both aircraft have been part of the airborne science program that focuses on gathering information on Earth's resources, conducting celestial observations, studying atmospheric chemistry and dynamics, and analyzing oceanic processes. These 
analyses are carried out thanks to advanced devices used inside the aircraft, such as an infrared imaging spectrometer, which uses more than 224 sensors. Serving as a flying laboratory, the ER-2 constantly collects critical data on a wide range of atmospheric sciences. One example involves the study of intense thunderstorms in Earth's atmosphere, which was the main objective of the Dynamics and Chemistry of the Summer Stratosphere project. It focused on understanding how these powerful storms can influence atmospheric chemistry, particularly concerning the ozone layer and climate change. To achieve flying altitudes of 70,000 feet, the aircraft's capabilities were ideal to fly above the overshooting tops of thunderstorms and collect data on water vapor, ozone, aerosols, and trace gases. Although the plane is used to analyze atmospheric conditions and phenomena, its powerful instruments are used to detect and monitor forest fires. This aircraft is equipped with an Averis spectral instrument from a jet propulsion laboratory. This along with the ability to maintain high altitudes for an extended period, allows the team to have a broader view of the situation. Such technology allows for real-time mapping of the affected area, providing the emergency teams with useful data on the situation. This results in an optimal and more immediate response to the most critical sectors during this type of phenomenon. The development of aerospace technology has brought with it innovative products with great capabilities to help current problems and even drive the development of better instruments. Improvements in navigation, analysis of natural phenomena, and even emergency detection are only a small part of the incentives for generating new and better solutions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.